You'll remember that last week we watched and listened as Jesus was taken up to the wilderness by the Spirit and was tempted and tested by the devil, passed the test with flying colors, and then he went back to Capernaum and started to preach. He preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So following last week's passage, but before the one I'm going to read now, Jesus calls his first disciples. He says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men, to Peter and his friends. And they followed him, and he went on proclaiming the same good news and healing people and helping everyone. And pretty soon there was a large crowd following him, and that's where today's story picks up. So listen to this reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 20, and listen to what God is saying to you today through these words. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will the Thank you. 
So a friend of mine posted a thing on Facebook that had said, these are seven prayers for 2023. May your finances multiply. May your health improve. May your family be loved. May your friends be blessed. May your pains be less. May your worries disappear. May God bless you. That's so nice, right? All of them. We want all of them. But those blessings are not what Jesus talks about in the Beatitudes. This isn't what Jesus is giving us. It can be confusing. It doesn't make sense to the world to say that the list of people Jesus names are blessed, or sometimes the word is translated happy, because we associate blessings and happiness with lives of multiplied finances and improved health and loved family and no worries. That's what we associate with blessings. And clearly, Jesus isn't talking about people with those things in this case. He's not talking about people who are content or rich or complacent. He's talking about everyone else. A lot of times when we read or teach or preach about this passage, we talk about how Jesus' proclamation means that God is turning the world upside down. The great reversal, we say. This is the great reversal. The morning will have joy. The persecuted will be rewarded. The hungry will be fed. In the musical Hamilton, there's a song about the Battle of Yorktown in the Revolutionary War, and the title is The World Turned Upside Down. It's a phrase that we use to describe the American experiment, the founding of the United States, which is such a radically different thing than how other countries were being governed. The world turned upside down. This is a common way of thinking about our, the early days of our country, and it's a good way to think about how Jesus was preaching in the Beatitudes, with one exception, the world was already upside down. Sure seems that way sometimes, doesn't it? The world is upside down. This world is so confusing, so full of trouble, so full of pain and injustice. It just feels like it's upside down. Jesus was turning the world right side up. He was proclaiming that indeed the kingdom of heaven was not something to look forward to in the future. The kingdom of heaven was here with them. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful for they will receive mercy. Although the reward may be stated in the future, they will do this. The blessing is in the present. Jesus isn't telling people to be poor or meek or merciful so that they'll be blessed in the future. He's bestowing the blessing on them now. Blessed are you now whether you're mourning or pure in heart or being persecuted for righteousness' sake, whether you fall wherever you fall in this spectrum, you are blessed, you are beloved, you are holy, you are set apart. Not only later on, but now you are blessed. And when we encounter people in these positions, we are called to honor them as such. We are called to honor folks around us who are struggling as blessed people. So maybe you're in the first category that Jesus names. You're poor in spirit, you're mourning, you're meek. 
It's an incapacitated place, a helpless place. But know this, Jesus says, you are blessed, you are beloved, you are holy. Maybe you're in a different place in life. Maybe you're hungering for righteousness or you're acting with mercy or you're pure in heart. You're praying about that. You may still be passive in your faith, but that's okay too because that's where you are and you are a part of God's kingdom. You are blessed, you are beloved, you are holy, and you are important. Maybe you're farther along in your faith journey. Maybe you're out there actively working as a peacemaker, not just for the sake of the country or the community, but in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're being persecuted or reviled or slandered for the sake of our Lord. You too are blessed. You too are beloved. You are holy. When it just seems like too much to handle, when you feel like giving up and giving in, remember this, God's love is never ending and the kingdom of heaven is near. Jesus has turned the world right side up. The hypocrites and the oppressors and the slanderers aren't ready for this right side up world but you are already living in it. Blessed are you, holy are you. Yours is the kingdom of God. We are so blessed today to be able to ordain and install new leaders in our church. And so I ask that David and Debbie would come forward and stand with me, and Sherry is going to help as the clerk of session. So I'm going to stand here, and you guys stand here, and listen to these sentences of Scripture. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. The session of John Knox Presbyterian Church now ordains Debbie Englade and installs her to active service. The session also installs to active service David Llewellyn, a ruling elder who has been previously ordained. David and Debbie, in baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in Jesus Christ your Savior Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness 
to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you. Do you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church, as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? There you go. <laughs> will you fulfill, and it was a long one, will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I will. Yes. Do you? I do. <laughs> Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. So you listen for the cue then. <laughs> <laughs> will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. Will the congregation please stand? Do we, the members of the church, accept Debbie and David as elders, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? Do you? We do. Do we agree to pray for them? to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. Do we? We, we do. do. Let us say together what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed, as found in your bulletin. I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and their life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. If you are an ordained elder, you may come forward now for a prayer and laying on of hands. This is a time, speaking of blessing, when we bestow a special blessing upon our elders and pray for them. Let's all get up there. There we go. If you can't touch them, you can touch each other and it's still, it's like a chain. It's like a Holy Spirit chain. Electricity goes right through you. All right, let's pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. Now pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servants, David and Debbie, whom you called through baptism as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Gracious God, we also give you thanks for your servant David as he continues in the ministry which you have called him. 
Help them to rely on the gifts of your spirit and to follow Christ faithfully in this calling. Give to Debbie and to David a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. By the gifts of your Holy Spirit, empower them to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give to all your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, and courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Amen. David and Debbie, you are ruling elders ordained and installed to ministries of service and governance in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back, David. <laughs> I know. Careful on the steps, y'all. <laughs> Everyone can stand now as we sing our hymn. This one's on the insert, Blessed Are They. Blessed Are They. 